Vaping is risky no matter what you vape. Although it's less risky than smoking cigarettes, the safest option is to avoid vaping and smoking altogether. Research into the health effects of vaping is ongoing and it may take some time before we understand the long-term risks. So what do we actually know about the effects of vaping fluids with and without nicotine as well as vaping THC? Let's assume there exists a greater alternative to smoking cigarettes which could help millions of people quit smoking while having only few health risk concerns and chemicals that cigarettes do. A less harmful alternative already exists in form of vaporizers and is one of the best products invented to replace cigarettes. And everybody thinks that health officials and anti-tobacco activists are pro-vaporizers, but instead are much the same against it because they don't actually distinct between the two of them. So is there any sense behind that? Vapor contains no tobacco. Instead a liquid with nicotine is derived from tobacco leaves with commonly infused popular substance THC. And if there is no smoke, there is no combustion. Combustion happens in cigarettes and releases dozens of toxic chemicals and substances simply referred to as tar along with ash and carbon monoxide. Since vapors have none of those, they should be theoretically completely safe, right? Because of notion as healthy alternative, according to Center for Disease Control, cigarettes and vaporizers sales and use has skyrocketed in last few years. If we compare from a half a decade ago and today, numbers have gone up more than 25% among teens and students up into their 30s. Just to get a perspective, in a couple of months during 2018, more than 3.6 million US middle and high school students said that they had used vaporizers. So how do vapors work? Vaping means inhaling an aerosol commonly called vapor. Unlike true cigarettes, vaporizers do not burn anything, instead they turn a flavored liquid into a mist. In a part of vaporizer known as atomizer, the liquid is heated with help of heating coil and wick out of cotton. And when soaked cotton gets into contact with heat from the coils, liquid begins to produce vapor once it reaches the proper temperature. So because of simultaneous rise in vape users, there were also rises in reports of vaporizer related hospital admissions and even death. Multiple studies and recent reports stated chemical or substance abuse and not necessarily the addictive substances that have negative effects like nicotine and THC. And since we do not have a uniform term for vaping associated diseases, clinicians call it vaping associated lung injury. It is known that there is a health risk from repeated exposure to nicotine and THC, but a lot of evidence suggests also there is risk in oils and substances within vapor liquid itself. Along with ingredients like heavy metals and nanoparticles, one of the known chemicals found in vape liquids are definitely propylene glycol and glycerol. When they are heated and vaporized, they can degrade into formaldehyde and acetaldehyde. Both of these are considered carcinogens by the International Agency for Research on Cancer and formaldehyde with label also as poison, although it's not yet clear how repeated exposure to them may cause cancer. They could also cause lipoid pneumonia, where fat particles bombard the lungs and trigger inflammation, typically seen in elderly patients who inhale petroleum jelly or mineral oils to deal with raspy throats. <coughs> Another element of suspicion is vitamin E, which is turning out to be more than extra chemical that is more recently being added to enhance flavor or burning. According to Sven Eric Hjort, Duke University researcher for nicotine vaping, vitamin could certainly cause respiratory problems, maybe even a lung inflammation associated with inhalation of oils. Because of similar clinical signs to other chronic lung diseases, these cases are extremely complex to diagnose as symptoms can mimic a common infection yet can lead to severe complications and extended hospitalization. Emily Chapman, Chief Medical Officer at Children's Hospital Minnesota, therefore encourages kids and middle-aged adults to cease any kind of smoking and try healthier alternatives.